Good morning and happy Sabbath. I'm Pastor John from Living Stones and Sunlantanga Seventh-day Adventist Churches. It's so nice to be able to be with you here today. Uh, at this moment, of course, we are in this place right now. And we call all of you, whether you're in Sunlantanga, Living Stones, or anywhere else, come to church sometime. We're doing it safely, doing it well, and it's going to be wonderful. Um, enough of my advertising. So now, happy Sabbath. Let's bow our heads for prayer as we discover whether we have a heart of stone. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, as we pray together, we ask you to be with us. Be with me. Allow your word to shine. Not my wishes, but thine. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, be with those that are sick, those that are recovering, those that are experiencing all kinds of pain, financial and physical. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be your hands, even if we do have to social distance in your name. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, let's open them up. It's going to be in Ezekiel chapter 36. But before we start reading, I'd like you to take a look at what's behind me here. See this here? These are Ten Commandments. Now, I'm sorry, sometimes there's a bit of a shine to this. If you take a look here, right there. This is in Proto-Hebrew. This is the Yod. You know, the Yod, those of you who, who know the, the Yod, uh, it, it looks like this. and Actually, it's going the other direction because Hebrew reads the opposite way. Okay? So, um... But these are the 10 words, or should I say the five words are on this one, and then the other five are on that one right over there. You see it? So um, here is the letter for Yod. Yah. Yah. And in Hebrew, Yah is a shortened version of Yahweh. This is the section here where it begins the Ten Commandments, which is like the preamble or one of the commandments. It's part of the first commandment, essentially, is I am Yahweh. I am the Lord. He defines himself. I am the Lord that brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. Therefore, lo, you should not have any other gods, loch Elohim, before me. We, as human beings, always have other gods before him. Us Christians seem to even put other gods before us, maybe political agendas, Maybe we're on the right, and we've got our agendas, and we, we put, sometimes on the right of politics, we put ahead of God law and order, which I understand. We need to have law and order in society. But sometimes we relegate those who don't agree with us politically to hell. Sometimes our hearts... How do you like this? Or just like that. Is your heart cold? Just like this? Maybe on the left, we say that we love, right? But then we also destroy others for not loving in the way that we should. We say we care about races, but then sometimes we have some of the same racist principles that we say that the right has. Right and left. Because we all are hard. Is your heart like this. These Ten Commandments were written 
They were written by the finger of God. These commandments were meant to be a law of love to humanity. It says, no other, don't take other gods, don't, don't bear false witness. That's later on, don't lie to people. You know, the first five are for God. I know many people say the first four. I, I believe five because honoring your parents is honoring God because he's our parent, right? Our original parent. Um, but it kind of mixes earthly and heavenly right there at number five. And then when we move on to six, as we have here, do not murder do not steal, do not kill, do not bear false witness. And then we go to the New Testament where Jesus says, or should I say Jesus is asked by a Pharisee, by a teacher of the law, which of the commandments are most important? And Jesus says, well, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And then he says, and the second is just like the first, to love your neighbor as yourself. God wrote these laws on stone by his finger. The Ten Commandments you have. The Lord, thou shalt not remember. You see the fire going into the Ten Commandments. I always, I'm very visual in that way. But then those Ten Commandments were destroyed. Because when Moses came down from the mountain with them, and we saw that they were worshiping the golden calf, they didn't even, that the first commandment they had already violated, and a bunch more worshiping golden calves included many detestable things to God. He took those covenants, that, that Ten Commandments, and he threw them on the ground and they were destroyed. A sign of a broken covenant. A new one must be made. So then what he did is God then showed Moses the sanctuary system. He showed him on the mountain a new plan. He sculpted out the testimony, the Ark of the Covenant, the uh, laver, all the, uh, the, the golden candlesticks, the menorah, the sacrificial system, which is the embodiment of how Jesus, when he comes, was going to die for us because we have a hard time keeping his commandments. And so he shows us his love and his protection and his faithfulness to us. But then Israel, all they could see is this. Do you feel like your heart is stone? Are you unable to care for others that are on the opposite side of the political spectrum, on the opposite side of the religious spectrum? Could you be able to shake the hand and have a joyful time meeting with people that you disagree with? Would you be able to care for someone who has treated you so poorly? Are you a heart, or should I say, do you have a heart of stone, is my question mark for you. I know I deal with that all the time. And so we pray. We get in our room and say, God, please help me. Please make me better. Or please change those people. And it seems like the ceiling is made of iron for our prayers bounce off of it. Maybe we experience pain in our lives. And we expect that God should answer it. After all, he should answer it. Because I am trying to follow all the rules in these commandments. God. I've done everything for you. Where are you? Have you felt like that? Have you felt like that? You're not alone. Even John the Baptist.
asked his disciples to go to Jesus and to say, are you the one that is supposed to come or am I supposed to talk about another one? So John the Baptist, even he himself experienced a heart of stone. When you have a heart of stone, there is no oxygen in your body. Let me explain. As your blood is pumping, of course, the two ventricles are strong and they, they push the blood to uh, they push the blood to the different areas of the body. But then the atriums, little smaller areas, are the ones that push and take from the oxygen area, because you see it needs to be pushed out to the lungs. And it has to move. The heart cannot work without movement. If it's a stone, it just sits there. It just, just sits there. Death, cardiac arrest happens. The heart becomes hard. The hardening of the arteries. Everything doesn't work correctly. But if the heart is soft and pliable and there is movement, Oxygen comes. The blood moves to your lungs. The lungs exchange out the carbon and the poisons coming out of your body that are poisonous to us and accept into it oxygen that comes in. The blood comes and it's more bright red, not dark red, and it comes back and it gets pumped now out to the capillaries, out in the body as it moves about. And the oxygen enters your legs, your arms, your body. No anemia if you have oxygen. Have you ever argued with someone that has a heart of stone? It's like sucking the oxygen out of the room. We even have a term called to suck the oxygen out of the room is somebody is just at hominem arguing and, and having big speeches that just pull all the feeling out of everything and you just have to either agree or disagree. You become the angry enemy if that person talks. That's how politics works. The left will try to suck the oxygen out of the room. Then the right tries to suck the oxygen out of the room. A good politician always knows how to just suck the oxygen away from the other side. That happens in church as well. That happens in families as well. With moms and dads and children. When you threaten someone. Or when you accuse another person of something. You suck. The oxygen out of the room. But then. I'm reminded of a text in Ezekiel. I hope you're there. Chapter 36, Ezekiel chapter 36. I promised you I'd get to the text. <laughs> I know it's a bit of a different sermon than what you're used to, but it's time for a little Mr. Rogers here, right? Okay, 36. I'm gonna start with verse 24. Are you with me? For I will take you out of the nations, God says to Israel, and this was Israel that wasn't following him, ignoring him. And actually, in chapter 37, Israel was likened to a dead pile of bones. And then God gives them life, puts oxygen back in them. We're going to get to what oxygen is biblically very soon. For I will take you out of the nations and I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle you with clean water and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart. A new heart. You know what the word in Hebrew for heart is? Lav. Or you can say lavav. It sounds like love, doesn't it? Lav. 
I will give you a new love. Love Kodesh. New heart. I will give that to you. A new heart. And I will remove from you your heart of stone. Jesus promises us this. He promises us this. I'll take away your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit. The word for spirit, ruach, can be translated as breath. I'm going to give you oxygen. I asked you before if you've ever been in a room where someone accused you of something and it feels literally like someone punched you in the stomach. <clears throat> Your heart can't beat anymore. You're not getting enough oxygen. You feel like, I'm, I'm, I'm claustrophobic. I have to breathe. Guess what? God promises you, no matter what they say to you, I will fill you with oxygen. Your shoulders become able to move again. And you can breathe because I will give you a new heart of blood and spirit. I will move you to follow my decrees and you will be careful to keep my laws. You will love, or should I say, you will live in the land I give you. But I, I digress for you will love to live in the land. Remember, love of his heart. So I put in love there, huh? that I gave to your forefathers and you will be my people and I will be your God and save you from all of your uncleanliness. I will call for the grain. I will. So he's talking about all these things he's going to do for us. He's going to make us prosperous as he can give us open heart surgery and take the hard stone out of us and give us a heart of flesh. Now, by doing this, it doesn't mean we don't follow his decrees. Instead, these decrees now are written on our heart of flesh. Not based on politics, not based on anger, not based on hard heartedness. I have a picture here. A picture here of a new heart coming out of old stone. Jesus wants that red heart to start coming out and working in your life with your spouse. Are you hard-hearted? In life, are you so much into love politically that you've learned to hate? Or are you so much into law and order that you've learned to despise and be like this instead of like that? Have you lost your religion through these events? Have you started asking yourself whether God can really love you even though you don't put God first? The answer is, Yes, he loves you. And you know why he loves you? He knows you have capacity to love. That's why. He knows you can be salt and light. That's why he did what he did on the cross. He asks us to be a part of his team, but then he dies so that you, you might have a new heart. In Exodus chapter 37, he says it well. Verse 12, 37, Ezekiel 37, verse 12. Therefore, prophesy to them. And, and God is saying to Ezekiel to prophesy to these dead bodies now that have been created. God had first put the bones together. Then he put a bunch of skin on them, the sinews and all the flesh and all the tendons. But there was no breath in them. And then he says, therefore, there was no spirit. The oxygen was out of the room. Therefore, 
prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says, oh, my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel, flowing with milk and honey. Ladies and gentlemen, are you, children, are you feeling like sometimes you're in your grave, stuck in your pandemic house? <laughs> Even when we're going around, we can feel like we're in graves. In our lives, so many times we feel like that we go through monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday monday we don't live jesus said i have come to give you life and give it more abundantly and you don't find life ladies and gentlemen by joining a political side or more legalism, or more following the law. You find life in Jesus. And then his faithfulness teaches us how to emulate him by following the law of love and the law of life. My request to you is to follow his law here. Don't follow and be like the stone. My friends, put idols behind you. May God bless you all. Bye-bye.